hey, what's going on? Instagram, thought I'd jump on here, record a podcast episode, <laughs> and just have a conversation. You know, I haven't been on live as much as I'd like, but I'm on live. There's been a bunch of, you know, new changes going on Instagram. I, there's the uh, subscriptions that they just released and dropped, so that's pretty interesting, just seeing people charge for content. Uh, I've, I've got a lot of people reach out to me and ask me, like, are you going to do the same thing? Are you going to charge for content, et cetera? So that, that's pretty interesting what's going on right now in the social media landscape. It seems like all these companies are sort of just taken from each other, right? And they're all trying to be the same company, essentially, <laughs> right? They're all having the same features and functionality, essentially. The only company that's like really standing out right now that's that's really hard to copy is YouTube, right? All these companies, Instagram's copying TikTok, uh, Instagram's copying Snapchat, right? The the one company that I that I feel like is really hard to copy is YouTube, right? YouTube is just different type of content. It's not short, you know. YouTube content's a lot longer. YouTube content lives a lot longer as well, right? It's searchable. YouTube content. You're going in and you're searching for something specific. There are content on YouTube, like I know YouTube creators who are getting paid thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars for content they recorded five years ago, right? Like I'm noticing YouTube content is a type of content that just lives a lot longer. Again, it just lives a lot longer. So it's pretty interesting what's going on in the landscape. If you're tuning in, feel free to let me know what city you're tuning in from. I'm doing an IG live. If you're listening to this podcast recording, go to my page to check it out. I'm doing an IG live, talking to the people, answering questions, and then just rambling <laughs> and ranting. Um, so I don't have anything particular that I want to... Well, no, yeah, I do. I actually have some things I want to talk about. I'm looking at my notebook like, wait a second, you did write these things down. <laughs> and so what's up, everybody? Uh, if you're tuning in, my name's Abu, and I run a podcast called Power to F. Uh, make sure you share this. Make sure you let other people know. But what I want to talk about... Um, it, the other day, I was in a, in a Uber or Lyft, and I was going to my destination, and um, uh, the Uber driver picked me up and I sat in the back of the seat and she, she stares at me and I'm looking at her. I'm like, why is this woman staring at me? She's getting ready to pull up. She's like, man, you look so familiar. And I'm like, oh yeah. And, and I, <laughs> I knew where it was going, but I didn't, I didn't lead it on. I was just like, oh yeah. And I tried to put like my, slide my headphones back in, but you know, she caught me. And she's like, oh my God, you're you're the person that, that runs ads, right? You're the person that runs ads. I see you often. And I was like, oh yeah, that yeah, that is me. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe I just picked you up. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. And so at first, typically in these situations, you have to understand when I, I travel a lot and I run into these situations often where people will recognize me and it makes it hard because you don't want to be the, you know, the the person they're like oh i met him in person he's actually really mean <laughs> he didn't respond back you know and so i'm always trying to navigate these situations but i was like you know what you know let me just let me not put my headphones on let me have a conversation and and see where she's at so we were talking and the thing that we were talking about and the reason why i'm bringing this up is because we were talking about value Right, so she was someone who runs a business, and we were talking about value and price, right? Uh, value and price. And when you're a business owner, when you're an entrepreneur, these are things that's always coming up. What do I price my products at? What do I price my services at, right? What's the value that I'm providing? And so we were talking back and forth during this ride, and I was just listening. I was primarily listening, uh, and then I chimed in when you know if she, you know if. If and when, you know, she wanted to hear my input, you know, I try to refrain from giving advice right away uh, unless someone, you know, wants me to give them advice or give them feedback. A lot of times I go into situations and I just try to be the best listener that I can be. Right. Because sometimes people just want to vent. Right. They just want to talk. <laughs> and so I just let them talk. But I've also found that I'm the type of person if you start telling me about something I've broken your business up 
in my mind on how you could improve and make a million dollars in the next 12 months. Like that's how my mind works. And so a lot of times I have to hold myself back. I got to be like, okay, let me hold myself back from, from saying anything. Cause I could go down a rabbit hole of, you know, wanting to fix somebody's business, et cetera, but they're not where mentally where they need to be in order to receive actually what I'm saying. So let me listen to them and talk to them in a way where they're where they're mentally at, right? Because I don't want to overwhelm them. A lot of times when I'm hearing people talk about business and I give them advice, I overwhelm them because they're like, oh my God, I got to do all these things. Um, but if, if they had the right mentality, it's like, oh my God, thanks. Now I got to go do all these things. You see how it's different? You know, a lot of times it's overwhelming when you're mentally not there and you say, oh my God, I got to do all these things. But if you're mentally there, you will say, oh my God, thanks. I got to do all these things. It's, it's just a different way of phrasing. And so we're talking and we're talking about value. You know, what is our value? What is our value that we provide? What is the value that we sell? And some of the things we're talking about. So we, we, we're in this Uber ride, Lyft ride, you know, I'm going you know, someplace and she tells me, hey, Abu, like now that I recognize who you are, <laughs> now that I recognize who you are, let me go ahead and ask you my questions. The thing that I loved that she did was she's like, is it OK to ask you questions? I'm sure you get it all the time. And I'm like, oh, no, like <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's OK. It's OK. So I appreciated her asking me. So then I was like, OK, let me let me try to add any type of value during our uh, conversation, our car ride. And she starts off and she was like, hey, I have a little business that I've been running. And I was like, all right, <laughs> I cut her off and I don't like cutting people off. But anytime people are down talking themselves or playing themselves um, in any particular way, I'm just like right off the bat that like, right, we're not going to do this, right? <laughs> we're not going to downplay ourselves and what you're building. It's not a little business. It's your business. I'd say... Tell me the story again, but this time tell me about the business that you have, not the little business that you have. And so she started laughing because she 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 heard herself. She's like, I knew I shouldn't have said that. And I was like, yeah, just tell me about your business. So she tells me about her business and what she's trying to do. And she's like, yeah, I am, you know, providing all this value to these clients and I'm charging them. Uh, she had said like 450. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, 4,500. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm going to the highest number because I'm like, okay, 4,500. She said, I'm doing 20 posts for them on social media from reels to stills to long form content to this. And I'm like, wow, like, that's a good value. And I'm like, so how much is it again? She's like, $450. I'm like, stop, stop the car. <laughs> I'm like, $450. So you're providing all this value. You just told me you helped someone grow from under a thousand followers to 38,000 followers in the last two months. So if you're having this type of value and impact, why are you only charging $400, $500 for this service? And she was like, well, I, well, I don't know, you know, maybe that's too high, you know, and, and the reason why I bring this up when we talk about value, I knew she struggled with value because she led with price. People that struggle with value lead with price. They start by saying, this is what I do and this is how much it costs, right? They don't talk about the transformation they've had. They start with, I charge this amount of money and then they go into what they do. So anytime I see someone leave with price, a lot of times I know they don't understand the value. And so when what I recommend and what I suggest is lead with value. Whenever I talk about, and for those of you that don't know, I run the largest online marketing accelerator on, uh, online, and I train business owners and entrepreneurs how to use paid advertisement to promote their product or service-based business. Now, whenever I talk about it, I talk about in the last 12 months, We've helped, you know, over 5,000 students generate over $30 million collectively in sales. 90% of our students are women-owned businesses. You know, this, these are the things I start with. I start with the transformations. We recently helped a woman that was making skincare products in her kitchen go from $500, to a, $500 a month to, to $5,000 a month to $15,000 a month. We recently helped someone who was... Um, 
who were selling uh, books online go from selling one book a day to 10 books a day, right? We recently helped someone who was, you know, a, a coach go from making, you know, $1,000 a month to making 100000 a month. I start with the transformation. These are the type of results we get our students. These are the type of results we get people that, that work with us. And then if they want the transformation, the price is secondary. It's like, okay, well, how, what do I need to do in order to get there? And this is why I want you to lead with value because when you lead with price, there's a few things that happen. When you lead with price, you don't understand your value. But the other thing is when you lead with price, you don't give people an opportunity to understand the transformations you have. So right away, they just tune you out. They're like, okay, that's kind of a lot of money. You know, they, they tune you out because they haven't heard the transformation. So this is why I lead with transformation first. So then when I give the price later or when they go, then they have to have this internal battle with themselves. Like, how bad do I want this transformation? Right? How bad do I want this transformation? He got payment plans. Right? He got 12 month payment plan. How bad do I want this transformation? And this is where I start to weed out who actually is doing the work and who actually just talks about doing the work. Because knowing what you have to do and doing what you have to do are two completely different things. Does that make sense? Knowing what you have to do and doing what you have to do are two completely different things. We all know what we have to do. Okay, I need to wake up earlier and study. Okay, I need to stay up later and do more work. You know, I need to, after my nine to five, spend the next few hours working on my side hustle. You know, I need to go read this book. I need to take this course. I need to, we all know what we have to do. Our list for what we have to do is extremely long. It's longer than a CVS receipt, right? Our list for what we have to do is extremely long. But how often are we actually crossing those things off? How often are we actually doing what we have to do? And I, and I think this is the difference between people that, that, um, that are really about taking action on, the go on their goals, right? Because again, if you don't take actions on your goals, what are they? They're just dreams. That's the differentiator between goals and dreams. Goals you're working towards. Dreams you're just having, right? So there's a difference between knowing what you have to do and doing what you have to do. There's a huge difference. And so I leave that up to someone internally to, to figure that out themselves, right? I provide the testimonials. I talk about the transformation, etc. But that's up to them. And just because someone doesn't buy into your value doesn't mean it's valued at that, at that price, right? Just because someone doesn't buy that price doesn't mean the value diminishes. There was a time where I thought that, okay, well, I'm going to take everything I've learned in the last 15 years of running advertisements, etc., and I am going to charge a fee that makes sense for everyone. Rather than charging the value that I thought, I say, you know what, let me make this affordable for everyone. So when I first launched PYL, it was a monthly subscription for $10 a month. Everything that I learned in 10 years, I mean, in 15 years, I was selling for $10 a month. <laughs> and you know what people told me when I was selling for $10 a month? They told me it was too expensive. They told me everything I learned in the last 15 years wasn't worth spending $10 a month. And so you know what I did? I said, okay, I'm going to raise the prices up. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't. And that frustrated me because I was like, okay, I'm giving you everything I learned in 15 years and I'm only charging $10 a month. And when people said no to that, I said, I'm going to increase the price. And so I increased the price to $1,500, $2,000, $3,000. $5,000, $7,500, $10,000, because I knew the value of those 15 years. And guess what happened when I increased the price? I found people that were willing to meet me at that price level. Because when I was marketing it at $10, I was trying to find the people that were willing to pay $10. And what happens when you try to find people that are at that level? A lot of times they'll tell you that it's not worth that, right? A lot of times they'll, they'll validate and say, hey, that's too expensive. I was trying to find people that are willing to pay 10 to $20 for something rather than trying to find the people that were willing to pay $2,000 for something, $3,000 for something. Those people didn't buy the $10 thing because they didn't see the value in it. They said everything else that I have that's of value cost a lot. 
So you're telling me this thing is of value and it's only $10? That's what my ideal customers were saying. And that's what they're saying to you, right? That's what they're saying to you when you're marketing your business. That's what they're saying to you when you're selling your products and services, right? Your ideal customer may not be the people you're marketing to right now because it's priced too low. Right, Your ideal customer is looking for the value. They associate value with things that are priced high. But you're trying to sell your, your whole life, 15 years of what you've done, the last five years of what you've done for $10. It's not going to work. You're targeting the wrong people. Again, you're targeting the wrong people. And so these are the things that I learned the hard way. And guess what happened when I charged 1500 for the program? People bought it. You think the program changed? No, it was the same program. <laughs> guess what happens when I, I, I did $2,000? People bought it. Guess what happened when I charged 2500 People bought it. Guess what happened when I charged three k 5 k 10 k People bought it. Because the value, the transformation, they were buying the transformation they could have. Right? They're buying the transformation they could have. And so these are the things I started to learn. I said, you know what? It would have took me a lot longer to reach my goals selling at $10 a month. Because if I had sales goals of $100,000, how many people would I actually have to sell to in order to get there? And so I started breaking things down. I started looking at the math and say, okay, this makes sense. The value in the transformation, if I'm able to help this woman in her kitchen make go from $500 a month to $15,000 a month, what's the transformation? So she's spending $2,000 to generate $13,000 in profit, okay, monthly, consistently, and she could do it without me taking equity or any, oh, why wouldn't she want to do that? Right? Why wouldn't she want to do that? And so I had to really look at the value and, and what I do specifically in, in understanding my value is what I do is I teach a skill. I teach a hard skill. And so I understood why I was different than a lot of other programs that were out there that taught ads. I knew that what I was trying to do was teach a hard skill. Similar, if you signed up for an, uh, a coding boot camp, you would decide on the language that you wanted to learn. Okay, I want to learn Java. Okay, I want to learn CSS. I want to learn Python. I want to learn a specific coding. Coding is the umbrella. Marketing is the umbrella. But what in marketing do I specifically want to learn? And I say, you know what? I'm going to teach people ads. I'm going to give them the skill of ads. If they learn this skill, I don't care if they run a product business if they run a service business, if six months from now they decide to start another business, they're going to know how to run ads for any type of business. And the reason why it was different because in the market, people that were teaching ads, they had success once or twice and they would teach ads based on how they had success. They wouldn't teach the hard skill. They would just say, okay, if you want to do a, 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 a webinar, do it this way. Here's my... But they weren't actually teaching the critical thinking component of what do I need to have in place to run effective ads? How do I write copy? How do I target my audience, right? How do I create headliners? How do I create engaging and, and attention grabbing content? How do I build the funnel? They weren't teaching the hard skills. I said, if I teach the hard skills then it makes it a lot easier because I want you to be self-sufficient. That was my goal. That was my value add. Yes, it's going to take you time in the in in front end. It's going to take you time in the front end. And I'm never, I'm super transparent about that. It's going to take you time in the front end, right? Yes, you're going to spend a lot of time. Yes, I know you're a business owner and you're busy and you got a lot to do, blah, blah, blah. But learning the skill is directly associated with earning. And so whenever we talk about being a business, the goal is to make sales. So I don't care that it takes time up front for you because the goal in business is to stay in business for longevity not for a short period of time. You know, it always reminds me of JD's quote, you know, um, would you rather be a trend or Ralph Lauren? And I think people have that confused because they get on Instagram, they see people's short success, and they think that that's the longevity. They see someone have a $100,000 launch, but what, ha what about their other 11 months? What about their last two years? What about their next two years? Are they gonna have that same consistent level of success? 
And the answer is typically not, right? They're typically not because they don't even know how they made that amount of money. If I ask them, well, where's the source of the sales come from? How many percentage are people that are already familiar with your brand versus people that have never heard of your brand? And a lot of times it's 99% of people that heard of their brand. But okay, in order to grow your business and for longevity, you need new customers. So what are you going to do in order for acquisition? And so now we get into the strategy and this is where they don't, they don't know what to do. And they get frustrated because they're like, well, I had success. Well, yeah, you had success because you sold to people that already knew what you did and who you were. You weren't selling to people that had no idea of who you were, right? You weren't trying to acquire new customers. You were just marketing to people that were following you on Instagram that were already on your email list. There's levels to this, right? So when we talk about value, when we talk about price, what I'm talking about is pricing based on value. What type of value can I give, right? What, what's the transformation in a sense, right? And so we were talking and we were talking about that and she was saying she was charging four or $500 for 20 posts. And I said, hey, what I want you to do is I want you to increase your, your, the, the price because the value that you're giving the transformation is high. And then she brought up another point. She said, some of the clients that I'm working with, Abu, they don't really understand why it should be priced at this, right? They don't really get it. They don't really understand it. And I said, okay, I know where you're coming from. Back in the day, a long time ago, I don't do this anymore. I do not run ads for people anymore. But again, a long time ago, I used to run an agency when I did. This was a long time ago. And I used to work with some clients who didn't really understand the importance of ads. They just saw it. They saw people that were making money say they used ads, but they didn't really understand the importance of ads. And because they didn't understand the importance of ads, every it would be a fight every month. Okay, let's not spend a lot. But I'm like, well, we got to spend the money, right? We got to spend money to test. We got to spend a lot in order if you want to make more, right? But they were like, no, let's not spend a lot. And it would be frustrating because they didn't really understand the value that I was providing, right? They were almost holding me back. You know, there's this, um, uh, in, in the sports world, they talk about Michael Jordan. The only person that could stop him was his college basketball coach, right? Because he wouldn't let him be Michael Jordan. He was, uh, he was um, Michael Jeffrey Jordan in North Carolina. When he got to the NBA, he became MJ, right? <laughs> the only person that could get in his way. And at this point, sometimes we work with clients that are getting in our way of really, you know, receiving our full value. And so I said, okay, in this situation, because I, I remember being in this situation, you have to come up with three or four, you almost have to do the research for them, come up with three or four compelling arguments on why you know this is valued and validated, and be okay with walking away. If they don't understand those three or four compelling arguments, those case studies that you created on why we need to go in this direction and double down in this direction, be okay with walking away because they're not there yet. They're not there yet. So it's, it's hard trying to argue with someone who doesn't understand your value when, when they're not there yet themselves. And I would rather spend more time looking for the right clients than spend less time taking anyone on, right? Again, I'd rather spend more time finding the right people than spend less time taking anyone on. And so these are some of the things as a business owner you have to make the decision around. It doesn't mean the decisions you've made are wrong, right? It just means you have to make the best decisions that fit currently for your current situation, right? That fit currently for your current situation. And so this 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 car rod turned out to be great. She was awesome. Um, I appreciated her asking me, hey, can I ask you a few questions? Because I know who you are. And um, we had this, you know, really great conversation. I posted like a clip of it on my Instagram as an Instagram reel, so make sure to check that out. Um, but that's what I really wanted to, to get at today. Price based on value. At the end of the day, you want a price based on value. And I, and I learned that the hard way. I learned that the hard way. Again, I grew Power Launch Marketing Accelerator. We've helped people so far, thousands of students collectively generate over 50 million in sales. And I don't think people understand like how big of a deal that is. And for about almost three years, we had no features. We weren't featured on Forbes, Business Insider, all these publications. We weren't featured anywhere. No one wanted to feature us, right? No one wanted to feature us because they couldn't believe the impact that we were making and we were doing it without them, right? We were doing it without these features. You know, I always talk about visibility versus impact. 
There are a lot of people that are getting these features on these Forbes and stuff, and you're questioning yourself and asking yourself, oh, am I doing it? Don't worry about that. Worry about the impact that you're making. Worry, worry about the impact that you're making because it goes a lot longer. Your impact is with your clientele, it's with your customer, it's with your tribe, right? The validation don't last long. Go to the Forbes 30 under 30 list, 40 under 40 list, 50 under 50, whatever the list is, and look and see are those businesses still being run. Most of those people that made those lists for those businesses they have, those businesses don't even exist anymore. Right? That validation, that outside validation is not more important than the impact that you can make. And so I understood this. And when we help people, we were helping people make so much money, guess what happened? We we're making even more money. When you start helping people make money, you start making money in your business. And in my first year in business, 12 months made a million in sales, right? Less than 12 months. And I told my mentor, uh, I don't think I'm going to go get my MBA, <laughs> right? I don't think I'm going to, uh, you know, you know, grad school. It, it doesn't make sense anymore, right? Because here's what I'm doing, right? Here's how I'm able to, you know, put it really to use. And so these are the things that happen for me, right? These are the things that happen for me and they're happening and will happen for you as well. And so you have to get really clear on who am I serving. You have to really understand that most times when you start something up, you're not going to get the credit you deserve, right? I've had students go and get their products in Target. I've had students go and appear on shows. I've had students go and got features on articles. You know how many of them mentioned me? Not a lot of them. I don't take offense anymore. In the beginning, I'm like, dang, but you're not going to tell people you took power your launch. Like, that's what you took. That's what really helped you out, right? That's what really helped you start making consistent income, right? And so, but after a while, I didn't take offense to it because I'm like, doesn't even matter. This validation stuff don't even matter, right? Don't even matter, right? It, it, it's appreciated, right? It's appreciated. I had a student recently, uh, Maya, she was featured on CNBC. They created a YouTube video of her. And she talks about how last year she made $350,000 selling jewelry. And in the video and in the article, she mentions my name. She's like, yeah, I took this guy, a Bufo Fonda's class, and he taught me how to use ads. And I went and started scaling my business. And, and literally, I think so far, almost like 300,000 people have watched the YouTube video. And they come and they DM me. They're like, oh, my God, Maya, I just saw her video. She mentioned you. I was trying to find you. Like, here you are. And I was like, I appreciate it. Like, I appreciated that because she told the whole story, right? The whole transformation. And she mentioned me, which is appreciated. It was, you know, she didn't have to do that. She did that on her own accord. And I had appreciated it, you know. I was like, oh, Maya, let's set you up. Let's run ads to a page because here I am. I'm like, okay, my, how do I make you the most amount of money? Okay, well, let's run ads to a, what, a page. Let's create a blog article. Let's get testimonial videos. And I'm going to run ads to this. And anyone who signs up, I'm going to make you a partner affiliate. So I'm going to give you a higher percentage of affiliate sales and dollars as they come in. So anyone who signs up, I'm going to give you sales because they're watching this video. They're coming to find me. So let's just run ads. I'm going to use the CNBC logo. I'm going to run out to this blog post with testimonial. It's going to be your affiliate link. You're going to get paid. You're going to get visibility. People are going to go buy your products as well. Followers going to go up because I spend a lot of money. When I, when I put money behind ads, I spend a lot of money. Like, I don't think people really understand how much I spend <laughs> when it comes to ads. I spend millions. Like, I spend millions of dollars advertising. And so when I decide that, okay, I'm going to use you, I'm going to use your, your face, I'm going to use your video, like I'm spending millions of dollars. So you'll start seeing your sales go up, your visibility go up, your follow account go up, um, you know, people uh, coming in, like all these things happen because I'm just spending a lot of money. I'm spending a lot of money, right? I spend a lot of money on ads. I spend more than six figures each month on advertisement, right? So I, I kind of know what I'm talking about and doing when it comes to ads, right? When it comes to ads... I know that, like, if there's anything I know, I know that, I know that, um, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Google, etc. Now, my program that I run, I only teach Facebook and Instagram ads, but in the future, I could add additional, um, you know, sort of tiers and, and have, like, the other advertising platforms. But yeah, but again, I appreciate y'all listening in. <laughs>
Let me know uh, what questions you have for me. And if you're listening into this, again, you could go to poweryourlaunch.com forward slash pod, P-O-D, or you could just go to poweryourlaunch.com. And I actually have a form on my website now where you could actually ask a question and I could address it on the podcast episode. I'm going to try to take time once a week to address some of the questions that you all have for me. Tell me what's going on in your business. Tell me what questions you have for me around marketing, around monetizing, around scaling, sales, whatever it is, finding your audience, whichever, and um, you know, tune in uh, to the, these episodes. And for those of you, again, make sure you leave a review if you're listening to this. Share it on social media if it's an episode that resonated with you. Tag me. I repost it, etc. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. What's up? So again, I like recording my podcast episodes <laughs> while I'm on live. I like to knock out two things at once because it'd be a struggle trying to like do all these different things separately. So I just recorded a podcast episode. Um, but feel free, for those of you that are tuning in, uh, ask me any questions you have for anything that I talked about um, in general during the session. If you have no questions, great. I'm going to run, run away. Um, <laughs> but let me know. Someone asked, is TikTok ads similar to Facebook ads? Similar in a sense, meaning that if you understand Facebook ad structure and what a campaign is and an ad set and an ad, it's very similar in structure, but it's a little different when it comes to targeting. Well, it is different when it comes to targeting and content creation. I always tell people if you take a Facebook ad video and run it on TikTok, it'll perform poorly. But if you take a TikTok ad video and run it on Facebook, it will perform extremely well. Because the way TikTok content is set up is, is different than the way a Facebook content is set up, which is different than the way YouTube content is, diff, is set up, right? YouTube content, it's least likely you're gonna go on YouTube and find like a 60 second video. A lot of the videos are a few minutes long, you know, 20 minutes long, 15, 10 minutes long, or even longer, an hour, so forth. And so the structure is different and on all these platforms. So TikTok performs really well because you have to be extremely creative, right? And capturing attention. That's what's missing. People that create Facebook videos and Instagram ad videos, you don't need to be as creative and capturing attention. And so you could get away with generating sales and leads without being creative. But if you could be creative, if you could really create like a TikTok video and run it as an ad on Facebook, Instagram, it'll do extremely well. Um, Okay, what someone asked me. Is a hall pass still available? Um, yeah, we still have the class pass available. Yep. I have a mocktail business and I like some advice on creating avatars. I guess I would uh, ask a little bit more about uh, what's your business flow? Like what's your business structure? How are you selling to really understand um, you know, different avatar types, meaning are, are people ordering online? Is this a service based business where you're coming up to people's houses like or events? Like, tell me a little bit more about the business so I have a better idea and could talk to something uh, specific. Have you done Pinterest ads before? Are they worth it? Yes, I do Pinterest ads. Pinterest ads are good. Um, they are worth it. Worth it is relative because you have to test it out to see if it's worth it for your business, right? And so worth it is relative, but yeah, I would test it out and I would see the type of results that you that you can get. Um, but that is something I would test out. Again, it's something that I would test out. What's your opinion on Facebook ads team? Do you recommend trying them? Facebook ads team, can you tell me more about it? Do you mean the people that tell you to schedule a call that's on Facebook? So here's a quick thing people don't know about me. So I actually train Facebook people and their employees on ads. Like that's how long I've been running Facebook ads for. So you know the program Elevate or whatever Facebook has, Facebook Elevate where you could take or Blueprint, whatever they call it now. I still have this theory that they created it to compete with PYL, Power Your Launch, because I was training Facebook employees, their employees were recommending people to my program, and then out of nowhere, they started creating this Elevate program. So instead of partnering with me, someone who already had everything created, they decided to create their own thing and make it free. But guess what? Their thing that they created, the value isn't as high, right? Their value isn't as high. They don't talk strategy. They don't talk case studies, 
right? They don't talk that because there's no one who has that level of experience. They talk about it like reading history. This is what happened. They don't talk about it because they, they, don't, they haven't lived it. They, they're not business owners, right? They haven't had that level of experience and detail. And so they could only teach it at a certain level. They could only give you advice at a certain level. A lot of those times when they reach out, and I remember scheduling a call once just to see what it was like. I was teaching the person. They were like, oh my God, I see your ads everywhere. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, okay. They're like, okay, what, what can I do? What do I need to know about? I'm like, all right, here I go, the teach, teaching mode. Um, so I don't, I don't see the value in them. But again, I'm just speaking from my perspective because I kind of already know a lot. Someone said they confused me. Yeah, they confuse me all the time because, again, they're people that are just got hired at Facebook and they don't really have experience. Right. They're setting up with account managers that are just telling you run Facebook ads they are good for you. Businesses use it. They don't really have experience. And so that's the frustration that comes out of it. They don't got experience. And so it's very frustrating when you get on the phone with them and they're telling you things that don't matter, telling you things that you can't really use, telling you to increase your budget here and there. But ask them, what experience do you have with this, right? Have you ran a business running ads? When's the last time you... They don't have that level of experience. They could just talk about it because they, they work at Facebook, but they can't really talk about it, talk about it. Yes, they being the Facebook folks, meaning the people that work at Facebook. Correct. This is not me taking shots at Facebook. This is just me letting you know the real, right? The people that are working at Facebook do not know often what they're talking about, right? They don't have real life experience with ads, right? They don't have real life experience running ads. Yeah, someone asked me, so I do run a, a, a digital marketing course. Uh, it's called Power Your Launch. You can go to poweryourlaunch.com and enroll and sign up for it, etc. But I do not run ads for businesses. Again, I know I had stressed that out earlier, but I do not run ads for other people. The point where I'm at in my career doesn't make sense, right? I'm already making a lot of money. Like It doesn't make sense for me to run ads for other people because it just doesn't make sense. The amount of time it takes to run ads for people, like I spend that time running ads for my own businesses. And so I always tell people, the people that are really good at ads, they're running their own businesses. Like it just doesn't make sense for them to run ads for other people because they're really not, it's not worth it. Like not saying that the company's not worth it or what they're doing is not, it's just like the time exchange isn't worth it. And so I would recommend people uh, trying to find someone who's on the up and up, right? Who's running ads, who's getting really better and, and, and hiring them or trying the agency route as well. I have a um, podcast episode, I think I did like two episodes ago about, or a few episodes ago about um, ad budget, hiring the right person when it comes to finding, you know, ads person. So make sure you check out that episode. It's a really good episode. I talk about it in more detail. Yeah, so I teach ads. I don't teach SEO or anything else. I teach paid advertisement. That's what I do. I teach paid ads. <clears throat> yes. Yes, come back to the program. Get a refresher. Um, get a refresher out here. What's the difference between YouTube ads and Facebook ads? Um, there's a big difference. Facebook ads is short form. Right, YouTube ads is again the structure of the content is different, and the best way I could explain when we talk about structure of content is um, let me think about it. Let me think the best way I could explain structure of content and why it's different. Um, YouTube ads versus Facebook ads. Okay, let, let's think about storytelling. For example, let's say I told the story from the end. Right. Let's say I said, oh, someone someone got murdered. The first thing you can ask is, 
well, why, how they get murdered, <laughs> right? You're going to try to go into it, and then I'm going to have to start from the beginning and lead all the way up, right? So YouTube is almost like you're starting with something like that. You're starting with someone got murdered, and you're going into it, right? With Facebook, it's really you may be starting in the middle, but not at the end exactly. So again, this is just a quick example that I'm thinking on top of my head. Um, and Facebook, you may say, Someone got really hurt because someone did this to them. And you're like, well, what did they do? Or, you know, you may say, you know, did you know, et cetera, right? right? Um, whereas YouTube, you're almost starting with like some sort of value shock and then you're going into the, the content flow is different. The content flow is different um, for the type of video content and ads that perform really well on YouTube versus that perform really well on Facebook. It's really the content structure. At the end of the day, it's really the content structure. Someone asked, why pay for ads when you can use TikTok to promote for free? Yeah, no, you can use TikTok to promote for free. I also post organically on TikTok. Um, I use ads because it's the easiest way to scale a business. It's the easiest way to find new audiences. Organic takes time, right? It just takes a lot of time. So if you have a lot of time, like do organic, but eventually you're going to have to do paid ads, right? There's only like every business that you shop at, that you buy from, you know what they do? They run ads. They run ads. Like they run ads. I think there's a stigma of people paying for Yes, that's what you have to do. Even if I post on Instagram, not all my audience is going to see it unless I run ads. TikTok, the same thing is going to happen. Every social platform that comes out, the reason why they're free is because they have an advertising platform that business owners pay to use. That's the only reason they're free. But guess what happens eventually? They stop showing your piece of content to everyone. It stops going viral, right? And getting viral content is really extremely hard. And then they're going to start forcing you to pay. It happens every single time. It's literally a cycle. This is literally the business model. And so the reason why I run paid ads is because I don't think about none of those things. Like, I don't think about none of those. People are like, oh, you got to do reels and post every day and TikTok ads to post. I bet TikTok uh, content. I'm like, no, nah, I'm just going to run ads. Like, I'm okay. I'm run ads. I'm run ads. I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. Yes, uh, the Power of Lunch Market Accelerator teaches you step by step how to run ads and how to critically think. As you run ads, do I have these things in place? Is this the type of content? I need to create this type of content. This is how I write copywriting. These are different type of copies I could write. So I give different examples. I don't tell you, like it's not a course of like, here's how you run ads for a t-shirt specific business. No, it's not that. If that's what you're looking for, it's not that. I teach you, here's how you run effective ads. It don't matter the business. Here's how you run ads at the truest, rawest form. Here's how you run ads. How you use it is up to you. But here's how you do it. Here's really how you do it. And so that's what I teach. That's what I teach. But yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. This was cool hanging with y'all. <laughs> Give me y'all some time out here. I appreciate y'all joining me. Um, again, you can click the link in, in my bio um, to join the Power and Launch Marketing Accelerator. I think right now the program, well, we discounted it like 60% off or whatever. And as I say this, there are going to be people that go and buy it. And there are going to be people like say, you know what, that's too much. And then, then when they go back on the page and see it's more, then they get upset at me. So it's extremely well valued. Um, it's just a lot of a lot of time it took me to, to build that as well. Um, yeah, so I would uh, suggest that the person I was asking about their uh, mocktail business, I would actually suggest, and I saw that you said you made 200K last year, is I would send a survey out to those people that bought. And, and I would send a questionnaire out and just ask questions to really start determining who your avatars are, right? You may have an idea because you're seeing the type of customers, the age ranges, and et cetera. 
go from that idea and really think about what are the top 20 questions I could ask them, you know, to really understand more in depth about who they are and which majority comes up on top and who is my primary and secondary customer base. So I would really think about those 20 questions you are going to ask them to really create that avatar for you. So make decisions based off of data or data, right? All right, that's all I got for y'all. Y'all all have a good one. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you check out the podcast. It's called Powered AF. Again, Powered AF Podcast. Leave a review. Leave a great review. <laughs> and uh, go to PowerYourLaunch.com if you're interested in rolling an accelerator or if you have a question that you want me to talk through on the po- as a podcast episode. Um, y'all be good. And I'll I'll see all y'all. All All right. (laughs) Peace.